Hello, my name is Hector Velasquez and welcome to GCS AA Inside the Shop. In today's episode, we're going to be showing you how to properly set up a cutting torch system and how to also properly shut it down. Now, while we're at it, we're also going to be giving you a few tips and tricks on how to get your next great cut. So let's get started. All right, so let's get ourselves for, familiarized with the torch gun. Um, right here we have the torch body and then this is our fuel and oxygen valves and these are a couple flashback arresters now this one is a 90 degree cutting head this is our preheat cutting oxygen valve and our oxygen cutting lever now we want to pick these up before we get started we want to make sure that they're you know they're safe there's no cracks there's no breaks Nothing that looks crazy. The same with the cutting head. We want to make sure that everything is mechanically okay. Now, I want you to pay special attention to these two O-rings right here on this base. We want to make sure that those O-rings are in good condition. There's no dry rot going on. They're not cracked in any way. This is what does the sealing. So we're going to join these two parts together to make up the gun. And now these are brass components, so let's be very careful. And before I button this down, I just like to orientate my torch body this way. Um, everything down, straight line, that's just me. But then I'm going to tighten this down with a wrench, really nice and snug, not crazy tight. And then here we have our cutting tip. This is our nozzle. This is really important for us to maintain. It has to be clean. Right here on top, these are these small orifices where the oxygen and the acetylene come through. And, you know, depending on how clean this is, that's how great our cut's going to be. So here we have a great tool that will help us maintain these tips. Um, this flat part right here, this is like a little file type thing, if you will. But we're able to clean the top of our tip. We're taking it in one direction. That's just going to remove any debris, get it looking good and shiny like this. And now it's time to clean the orifices. So we're going to pick our right size reamer. We don't want to jam any of these one reamers in there. If it doesn't fit, don't make it fit. Okay, brass components and we'll, you know, make that hole bigger than what it needs to be. All right, so now that we have that clean, we're ready to install it onto our torch head. And we're going to unscrew that securing nut off of this. Look in there, make sure it's nice and clean. We're going to put our nozzle on and secure that back down. There we go. Now we do not want to take a wrench to this part of the tool. We just want to do a really good hand tightening and it should be good to go. All right, so we're ready for our hoses. The same thing, we want to inspect our hoses. We want to check for any dry rot, any cracks. Uh, make sure everything's okay. There's no burns in it and pay special attention to the end fittings right here. This is where they like to split. Now the red hose is for the fuel and that's going to go attached on this side of our torch body. If you notice on the nut there's these little slits cut into it. That's indicating to me that these are left-handed thread. Okay so when you secure this onto the body make sure you're putting it on the left-handed thread side otherwise you're going to be a minute. And we're going to secure that down with a wrench and the oxygen line is green and that secures as a righty tighty. And there we go. We're gonna secure that down with a wrench as well. All right, we're getting ready to hook up to our tanks. Everything looks good here, everything's nice and tight. Let's get going. All right, we're gonna remove the tanks on this oxygen bottle. Now, uh, a little tight. Let me show you a real quick, neat trick basically just grab a nice little small hammer and tap the edges of the threads while you're turning it and it'll work itself loose like that do not be tempted to put any anti-seize wd-40 or any kind of petroleum on these bottles that's an extreme fire hazard all right now here we have our oxygen regulator this side this gauge reads the psi in the tank while this gauge your working pressure and the T-handle here, this is how we set our working pressure. Now this regulator has female threads on the coupler. And there's no way we can get this wrong. So I'm not able to put an oxygen regulator on an acetylene. 
and vice versa. And this is our acetylene regulator, same setup. This gauge will read the tank. Here's our T handle. And then this is our working PSI. We're gonna install that. And there we go. And these are left-handed threads as well. Are you starting to see a pattern here with this? <laughs> All right, we're gonna snug that down real quick. Brass parts, be very gentle. Okay, now we're ready to hook up our hoses. Once again, this is our oxygen hose, righty tighty. Snug that down. And then we have our fuel line and it's notched so that's indicating to us that it's a reverse thread. And tighten that down. Alright, we're good to go. So now, before we get started lighting anything up, you want to be wearing the proper attire. Make sure you're wearing long pants. I have a leather jacket that I wear with leather gloves to protect my body from any spark. And I got my boots on. Make sure you have good boots. I personally like wearing my welding helmet as it protects my eyes and my whole face. So now we're getting ready to open the oxygen. Guys, do not be tempted to look at the gauge. Look away from it and very slowly crank the valve. This is tank is under extreme pressure and we don't want to make sure that we're just safe. These regulators are known to blow if these are wrong, so be very careful. Now when you open this valve up, make sure you open it up all the way. This is a two-way valve. And then our fuel tank, our acetylene, we're just gonna crack that about a half a turn, a turn to a half a turn. Go online, download this thing. This is gonna help you. This is gonna help you set your tanks or your regulators to the proper thickness of material that you're cutting. It tells you the PSI for the oxygen, acetylene, as well as the tip size. So, and this is working PSI, so what we're going to do is we're going to turn our oxygen on and start turning in our regulator T-handle and set the working PSI to where you need it to be. We usually got to be quick about this, right, because we're losing oxygen here. All right, that's good. So now we're going to tighten everything back down, and we're going to do the same thing with the acetylene. We're going to turn it on, turn the T-handle, and set our working PSI on that. Now that we have our system charged up, I'm gonna check for any leaks. Usually I keep a bottle of soapy water and just spray all my connections down, make sure I don't have any leaks. And you wanna do it at the regulator and the tanks as well. All right, let's fire this thing up. We're gonna turn on our acetylene at the bottom here, light it up. Now, here's the best way to set your flame in. Make sure you're at a nice flame. Let me turn this down here real quick a little bit. All right, you see that so that comes out of the end of that? You want to set, increase it until that starts going away. Once that starts going away, that's a really good place to start with your valve openings. Now we're going to open up our oxygen. Now, Here's the trick, and, it, and it's hard to see in the video, and I apologize for that, but you're gonna see the cones coming off these orifices. You wanna make sure that flame and those cones stay on the tip of that gun at all times, and that they're really nice and sharp and defined, and you can hear that distinct sound that it has. Now, before we do any cutting, let me show you this trick I learned a while back. This is not my idea, I learned this online. Now, I made it out of a bed knife, 90 degree angle, and I welded, you know, about a half inch of height from the surface. And I'll clamp a hose clamp onto my nozzle like this. And now I can use this thing as a guide to help me cut really nice, clean, straight lines. Because it also helps me keep that height that I need to have on my nozzle on the workpiece. All right, now here we're cutting a piece of flat stock that's about a quarter inch. If you notice, I'm going back and forth with the flame. What I'm doing, I'm preheating the metal. It just makes for a really nice clean cut at the end there. You just want to give it a real quick few passes, depending on the thickness. Start at the edge, and once you commit, you're good. You got to go, keep going, don't stop. Keep it consistently slow and going. You'll see that spark. And it takes practice, you'll get better at it. I still got some work to do myself. Let's see what this looks like. And 
This is not looking bad at all. All right, so check it out. Here's the lines. Very few slags are left on it. It's nice and square. This is something that I can take back, grind off some of the impurities and weld that up. You know, grind these slags off, it'll be good to go. All right, so now that it's time to shut down, you can shut down either the acetylene or your oxygen. It doesn't matter which one first. Just get them shut down. Okay, now we're shutting down our acetylene. Now we got the system still pressured up, so I'm gonna open up my valves. I'm gonna open up my oxygen valve and bleed that side of the system out. And then I'm gonna open up my acetylene valve and relieve the system of that pressure. All right, and now it's time to release the diaphragm on the regulator. So I'm going to back out on the, on the T-handle here. You don't have to take them off. Just back them out enough to where, you know, they're really nice and wiggly like this. There you go. And that's good enough. All right. Okay, now if you're going to use your torch setup again in less than 24 hours, you can leave it hooked up and get back to it the next time around. Now, if the tanks are gonna be left alone for any more than 24 hours, OSHA says that you have to take this whole setup completely apart, store your cylinders separately and properly, according to code. Now, I wanna thank you for joining me here today on GCSAA Inside the Shop, where we're helping technicians one wrench at a time.